How's it going, guys? It is 3.59 a.m., 12th of May here in Japan. We have a difficult question for cardio neuro, step one, step two, nearly identical question. Shows up one of the two CK forms. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Elman underscore medical, and me, HLMan underscore medical, links down below. Let me telegram, links to telegram, give me a channel. Down below, and I start the clip. Six six year old man, 12 hour history, weakness of his left arm and face. Three weeks ago, he had an MI, spent one week in hospital, 10 year history of type 2 diabetes, mellitus, mentioned that forming glyburide. He smoked one pack of cigarettes daily, 40 years, blood pressure 125 or 80. Question wants to know which, which of the following is the most likely explanation for this patient's acute presentation. Let's just hop to the answer choice here. Choice A, carotid stenosis, wrong fucking answer. This refers to atheromata, atherosclerosis of the common carotids that can launch off to the brain, causing a stroke, TIA, or retinal artery occlusion. It's the wrong fucking answer because on US simile, this is going to be due to hypertension, which the patient does not have. So not only acutely is there no high blood pressure, but they don't mention it in the history. It's a long discussion. Some of you watching this clip uh, will know that I've harped on diabetes being the most acceleratory, acceleratory slash worst risk factor for atherosclerosis in general, coronaries, abdominal aorta, popliteals. But when it comes to the carotids in particular, that's going to be hypertension as the worst risk factor because you have the systolic impulse pounding those carotids, causing endothelial damage, allowing for atheromata development. So your consolidated point, because I've made many YouTube clips on this, can be a long discussion, that if the patient does not have high blood pressure, it's not going to be carotid stenosis. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B. Embolus from ventricular aneurysm, correct answer. So it sounds very weird. As I prefaced with, it's on one of the NBME exams. So you need to know that one of the potential sequelae of an MI is you can get weakening of the myocardial structures, the septae, and you can get an aneurysm leading to uh, a pocket of hematologic stasis where a thrombus can form, and in turn that can embolize to the brain. So if they give you a stroke-like presentation within a few weeks of an MI, you have to think of OMG, embolus from ventricular aneurysm, as the ideology. All right. So it might sound weird, but it's on the NBME exam. So real quick, left ventricular free wall rupture, wrong fucking answer. Obviously, a potential sequela of MI as well, but this would be uh, Beck triad. This cardiac tamponade, Beck triad, hypotension, JVD, muffled heart sounds, plus or minus pulses paradoxus. So drop of systolic blood pressure greater than 10 millimeters of mercury with inspiration. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, paradoxical embolus, wrong fucking answer. So this would be when you have an AST atrial septal defect where the paradox being you've got a stroke that originates from a DVT. Now normally if you have a stroke from an embolus, it's going to originate either from the common carotids or the left atrium due to left atrial mural thrombus from AF almost always, okay? Most of the time. So for there to be a thrombus originating from the venous circulation, holy shit. Uh, the only way that's possible is if it's gone up to the heart and an NASD is present and it's made its way into the arterial circulation that way to go up to the brain. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice Z, vertebral artery dissection, wrong fucking answer. So they mention this as on one of the NBME exams for 2CK as secondary to chiropractor manipulation. Okay, so patients might have their neck cracked and that can lead to vertebral artery dissection. Okay, and uh, the vertebral arteries, uh, if there is a dissection slash aneurysm that forms, we can get thrombus formation where a patient similar to the ventricular aneurysm that where a thrombus can form and then can embolize to the brain. For vertebral artery dissection, you can get a uh, thrombus formation that can embolize causing a lateral medullary syndrome. Okay, now we're getting into nitpicky stuff. It's a pass-fail step one, but uh, for TCK in particular, you should know that vertebral artery or PICA, posterior inferior cerebral artery uh, problems can lead to lateral medullary syndrome. Okay, so the uh, ipsilateral Horner syndrome, dysphagia, okay, so um, trouble swallowing, Pikachu, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, chew, dysphagia, okay, and Horner syndrome, as I said, it's important cause. I don't want to get 
crazy tangential, all right? But obviously Horner syndrome can be due to pancreas tumor, tumor, but you should know Horner syndrome can also be due to an ipsilateral uh, lateral medullary syndrome. So vertebral artery dissection can lead to lateral medullary syndrome and they want heparin. That's an answer on one of the NDME exams for TCK. They want heparin uh, for these patients in order to decrease the risk of thrombus formation. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.